we've got a settler here, Indonesia. Looks like he's heading towards the right. There's quite a few good spots. Um, Oasis, River... You probably get a good settle there, right on that fresh water next to the wheat. You could probably get a pretty good... You got double luxury as well. Or you could settle one tile of fresh water. This is why the Civ 6 AI sucks. Part 2 settling. Part 1 was about wonders. There's five main problems. The first one is that they mainly frequently settle away from water. Uh, with enough frequency that it's noticeable, uh, especially when you conquer them and you then have to raise the city because it is in such a trash location. Every city has two housing in it. You get one from the palace, one from salt water, and three from fresh water. If you only have one spare house left, then your city growth is slowed by 50%. If you have none or less spare house, it's 75% slower. This means that if you aren't settling on water, you are at a massive disadvantage. So we can give deity level sieves three starting settlers, but if they settle in the wrong spots, then they don't get the most from them, and thus they're easier to beat. To see exactly what the AI is doing with their settlers, I started a team game on LAN where I'm allied to two AI just so I can watch them and see exactly what they do. We have Australia here. Keep in mind that Australia gets uh, more housing for settling on the ocean. They actually get one more housing than freshwater. So they generally want to go on the ocean. Here's their first settle. Tundra, no water. How is going there better than going north? What about the fresh water on the um, east there? Why would you settle there? You got no water. It's, it's terrible. I mean, just because there's wheat and copper doesn't make it a good settle. Now we have another settler, because this is how the settler works. They get their extra settlers when they settle. And he's going north towards the horse. And now he has another city with no water. There's lots of coast that he gets a billion housing from because he's Australia. He gets like four housing. It's absurd. Basically, the AI doesn't value housing, which is very stupid considering that it is the cap for their population, which is the cap for their production and the work tiles. You need water. It's especially not worth it to settle on no water just for bonus resources. These aren't luxuries. These aren't strategics. In all my games, you get so many AI cities that aren't on water when a water option is available. It's not like it was a last resort. There are really good spots. They just choose not to use them. Let's go to problem number two of five. When they don't settle on water, they don't seem to care. Remember that Indonesian city from the very start of the video? Here it is 70 turns later. It doesn't have a granary, it has a couple of lumber mills, Alcazars, Colossal Head, it's building a holy site, got a commercial hub, and it has one farm. You can get housing from farms, plantations, pastures. You can even get an aqueduct or a granary. So if you do not settle on water, there are ways to fix it. The AI has chosen not to go any of these routes. It hasn't added any housing. That 0 0.5 housing from the one farm rounds down to zero. So they are still at two housing, which means 70 turns later on standard speed, and they only have a four pop city. That's terrible. That is absolutely terrible. The AI does this very consistently throughout my playthroughs, especially common on coastal cities where they don't build a granary or they don't improve the land, so they never actually get enough housing. And you notice that not only when you conquer it, but just by their growth. Because if they settle two cities at the same time, the one on fresh water always grows so much faster. So I don't know if they get extra housing as a difficulty setting, but whatever's happening, they are still getting hindered by their settling spots. Problem number three of five. Wonders. No, not those ones again. Natural wonders this time. Let's have a look at that China-Australia game again. Go over to China, and he's got a wonder. Now, any human player would settle near a wonder. Sometimes I do it even if it's not a good wonder, just because it's a wonder. Now, the AI has a different approach. 
we found Mount Kilimanjaro wonder. And China has a settler headed to it. It's one of its starting settlers because it's only turned 12. And he is settling, uh, settling towards it. It is a pretty good spot as well. But he doesn't choose to go there. He chooses to go on a no water, no wonder, no aqueductable tile. Now, there was an amazing spot next to the wonder that also had fresh water, that also had a luxury and a strategic resource, and he didn't choose it. I've seen this across all my games, actually. The AI doesn't value natural wonders at all. It seems to not take it into account because they almost never settle next to them. And if they do, it seems merely by chance rather by intention. As we saw right there, I don't think any human in the world would have settled there. Like, really? Problem number five. Kidding. Four. We've still got two more. This is what I call the wonder problem. AI has a tendency to just run around in circles with their settlers, to just wander around the map. Clueless, aimless, wasting time, wasting the advantage they have. This problem comes in two parts. The first part is that they have a tendency to just wander to the other side of the map. It takes like 30, 50 turns to get there, and then they settle, and it's kind of not even a good spot to begin with. It's not like, wow, I got uranium on a wonder and all this fancy stuff. It's just an average spot that they traverse the universe for. This is a two-for-one wonder on the same map, by the way. We have Australia and China, both, instead of settling on a natural wonder for China, and instead of settling on the amazing new natural wonder for Australia, they wandered past it. Look at this tile, by the way. Three science, three faith, three gold. Can get a mine on it, has two food. That is a beautiful tile, and you can get it in an aqueductable location or fresh water to the east. But instead, they chose to go really far north in just no man's land. It's Tasmania up there. And what's strange is that not only does China have good places to settle to the east, but he already has three horses. So it's not like a desperate settle to get a strategic. It's just bizarre. Now, I know as an Australian, if I get a city called Sydney, it's not worth keeping because it's Sydney. But... Why would you go all the way up there? What is the logic behind them that has made both of them just traverse, go through time and space to go there? Why would you go there? Part two of this problem is they just run around in circles. Here is an absurd sped up video of Australia. He's just running around in circles with his settler. When the war happens, he just runs it unescorted into enemy land. I have no idea what's happening. I have no idea what the coders have done to make the AI do this. But he is just clueless. He's just complete clueless. For 40 turns, Australia ran it around in a circle in between two Spanish cities, between two wars, until it finally got taken by Spain. I've seen this all the time. This is how I get free settlers in games. They're just unescorted, randomly walking, just just going on a nature walk, really. Final problem, guys. Almost done for part two of Infinity. Loyalty. It's a new mechanic, so it's a new problem. AI doesn't mind settling cities with terrible loyalty. They just don't care. Let's make it quick. Here's Barcelona. It's settled in desert. I don't know why. He just settled it, and it's already got a massive negative loyalty, and it flips in, what, five turns, six turns? What? Why were you ever here if you're going to lose it in six turns? That's part two, but it's depressing. You may notice that I primarily use the China-Australia game in this, because I wanted to show you that you don't need to cherry pick from like 50 different games to find these examples. I had one game where I had every example for you. That was only with two AIs. When you're playing against nine AIs, how often is this happening? How often are they just running around settlers in the fog? So there are the five reasons. And you should ask yourself the question, when you settle a city, what do you look for? It would appear the AI 
does not look for any of those things. They don't care about wonders. They don't care about loyalty. They don't care about water. They're fine with running around in circles instead of getting a fast settle. And they're fine just running to the other side of the universe. And on the odd occasion where they do get a bad settle, they don't fix it with granaries and farms and stuff. This one China Australia game has just crippled my hope for the game. Just what I saw in it has opened my eyes in a new level. Thanks for watching, guys. This is a new channel. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe. I've got a few other videos up. I will have part three out shortly. If you have any ideas, just put them in the comments because you may have found AI problems that I have missed. Thanks. Bye.